Good morning, New Life Church. My name is Ashley Polston. If you haven't got a chance to meet me yet, um, my husband and I are uh, just a couple of pastors at the downtown Little Rock Church, and we also are the directors of an addiction recovery program called M18 Recovery. This week, we're talking about addiction, and this is a subject just, that just really, really hits home for me. Not only did I um, experience addiction in my home life growing up, but I also went through addiction myself. And today, if you're listening and you're struggling with addiction, or maybe you have a family member who is, or a friend, I just wanna let you know that there is hope and that there is help. And so I just wanna dive into my story. Um, like I said, you know, I grew up uh, where addiction was present in my home, but also a lot of dysfunction. And I just remember looking at that as a young kid and thinking like, man, I don't want anything to do with that. However, as I got older, I just started developing a lot of anxiety, um, just a lot of depression. Uh, I didn't know how to cope with what I was going through in my home. And so I started hanging out with a different group of people and those people, you know, they drank and they did drugs. So eventually this is what I did as well. In just one year, I became a teenage alcoholic and a teenage opiate addict. I never knew that it would grip me as fast, as quickly, um, and as strongly as it did. This road that I was on led me to just a life of destruction, um, a life of hurt, a life of heartache, and also a life full of near-death experiences. One of those experiences that I had um, was very pivotal for me. Um, I was actually 17 years old at the time. I was drinking and driving and I hit a tree at 100 miles per hour. I broke the entire right side of my body. I'm talking from collarbone down, like broke the entire right side of my body. And out of those broken bones, I also was left with a paralyzed wrist. I went through four surgeries, stayed in the hospital for almost two months and had a very long recovery process ahead of me. At this time in my life, I, um, I, I didn't really see God as a loving father or a loving God. I felt like I was being absolutely punished um, for the mistakes that I was making. I had people come in and tell me like, hey, God's gonna get you through this. He's gonna heal that wrist. It's no longer gonna be paralyzed. We just believe it. And I would roll my eyes because I would, I didn't, why would God wanna heal someone like me, right? Why would he even love someone like me? Like I'm obviously not doing what he says in the Bible. And so I just saw God as like this dictator, as this person who just whips you if you do wrong and you know, like hugs you and opens his arms if you do right. Um, I couldn't see that I was saved out of something that should have killed me anyway, right? And so the funny part is though, is God has a way of showing us and who he really is and just listen to this part. So I get discharged from the hospital, I have an appointment, the doctor tells me he can't find uh, you know, any nerves uh, and just kind of reiterates that my wrist is definitely paralyzed. So I go home and shortly after that, I remember waking up one morning in my bed and all of a sudden I felt like this really weird sensation in my thumb and, and index finger. And I took off the brace that I was wearing at the time and all of a sudden my whole wrist was restored. And as you can see, it's restored now. And I just remember getting on my walker. Yes, I was 17 years old with a walker. It had a horn and it was awesome. <laughs> and I remember walking in my walker to the kitchen and where my mom was washing dishes. And I said, mom, look. And she was like, oh my gosh, you know? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I remember going back to my bed and sitting on the edge of it and just being in such shock and such awe. Like, and it was that day that I realized, okay, God, you're real. <laughs> uh, and I felt his love for the first time. See, God does have a way of getting our attention and that was his way of getting mine. Like that was his way of saying, hey, I'm out here, I'm real, I'm for you, I'm not against you, and I love you. All this guilt, all this condemnation you're feeling, you don't have to fix yourself to come to me, right? Well, the thing is, is like I realized that God was real that day and I realized that he loved me, but I had an addiction. And if anyone has ever struggled with an addiction or uh, you know of this, it's really hard to quit. I didn't know how to quit. I didn't know what to do to quit. And so for two years, I suffered in an opiate addiction. Um, and then finally one day, I just got sick and tired of being dependent on a substance. I got sick and tired of looking behind my shoulder. I got sick and tired of lying and manipulating. Um, I just got sick of me and my situation. Like I felt God had something for my life. I felt like there was something better I could be doing, but I knew that if I kept doing what I was doing then, I wouldn't get there. And so I just remember I didn't talk to anybody, I didn't pray. I was just like, okay, I'm gonna be sober. 
And guess what? I made it one week, one strong week, and I relapsed and I went right back. And it was in that moment that that guilt, the condemnation, the shame, it all came back and I just heard this voice like, just give in because you can't do it. But then on this other side, I heard this voice that said, no, like I, I can't but I gotta go to somebody, something greater than me. And in my kitchen, I've found a deep freezer. My husband always makes fun of me and says I got saved in a deep freezer. I didn't get saved in a deep freezer, but I did lay my elbows down on a deep freezer and I did get saved on a deep freezer. <laughs> Crazy, yeah, I know, it's weird. Um, but anyway, I put my elbows down on a deep freezer and I just said, God, I surrender. God, I obviously can't do this on my own. God, take it. And I began to list every drug, every wrong connection, everything that I was doing at the time that I just didn't want to dwell in me anymore. And I said, God, take it. I give it to you this day, I surrender. And all of a sudden, this heaviness that I just didn't even know existed, it lifted off of me. And that day, I became free. That day, I found my peace. See, I celebrate 10 years sobriety, August 15th of 2021 coming up. But I don't just celebrate 10 years sobriety. I can never take credit for my sobriety. I celebrate 10 years of giving my life to Jesus Christ because through that is how I've obtained sobriety. See, it all starts with Him. It all starts with saying, I surrender. I know I can't do this by my own strength. I give it all to you, Lord, now help me. Now, was it easy all the time? No. Is it still easy all the time? It's definitely easier, right? I don't struggle every day with wanting to go back and, and do drugs or drink. I have different struggles now. You know, I get a lot of people who might ask like, hey, you know, like, how do you remain sober? Like, hey, how, 10 years, wow, that's awesome. How'd you do that? Well, let me tell you, number one, Jesus, like giving our life and submitting everything to him. And then after that, the sanctification process. I had to realize, okay, um, I probably shouldn't go here. Can I can go here. Uh, I probably shouldn't do this. I could do this. Put myself around good people, positive people, church community. I had to go through some counseling to get rid of some just baggage and trauma and triggers. You know, I just, you, you start putting yourself around like positive people, places and things, and you just start diving into the word of God and putting yourself around an atmosphere that's going to help you thrive. And that's what I did. And as I started doing that, I began to get closer and closer with the Lord. And then he has given me strength to continue. And then my main thing though, is I found purpose. Like the moment I found Jesus, it was like something rose up in me that's like, I am called for something, right? I'm going to do something. I've got to change the world and I got to do it through him. And so I started college. I didn't really know like what I was going to do. Um, but eventually I started working with children and I just decided, you know what, I can use what I've went through to help other people. So I started working with children, teens, adults, and now here we are and we have our very own facility. Isn't that really cool? Isn't that amazing? And so I just want to say that if you are struggling right now, God can and will bring you out of it. Like he can step in and he can do what you cannot do. There is hope for addiction. There is healing for addiction. And I just wanna let you know that it, you're not alone. And if you have a family member who's struggling, you're not alone either. And I would love to be able to connect with you. I would love to be able to reach out to you. Um, I did, my contact information is gonna be in the description. And I just wanna let anyone out there know that there is hope and that there is a purpose for you. And God can take everything that we've went through and turn it for good. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. That is exactly what God has done in my life. He has taken the painful things that I've went through and he's helped me use it for my purpose in helping everyone that I come in contact with to know Jesus and if they're struggling with addiction or if it's in their family, to provide them hope that God can and God will. I hope this blesses somebody out there. Have a great day.